Thank you all very much for coming out tonight and being here. It's uh, wonderful to see my old friend John from the uh, FCC. He's a veritable font of wisdom and knowledge across a whole vast array of communications issues, and he contributed so much during his tenure uh, at the FCC and then at the White House, and you all are very fortunate to have him uh, uh, back here. Thank you to uh, Free Press, who has done uh, so much to put uh, these issues on the national radar screen and to mobilize citizen action in, in their behalf. It's an incredible, incredible story. And what a great and special honor it is for me to be here with my friend and your representative in Congress, Mike Doyle. I could use up all of my time talking about the good things that this good man has done for Pittsburgh and for Pennsylvania and for the nation across a whole wide gamut of policy issues. My beat, of course, is communications. And here Mike Doyle has been the champion of community media and low power FM and broadband for everyone and a media that really fosters localism and diversity and competition. Thanks to his determined leadership, Congress passed and the President signed, as you've heard, the Local Community Radio Act. Uh, we're going to take that seriously. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure those low power stations bloom and blossom across the country because in this age, uh, it's, they're more urgently needed than, uh, uh, than ever. That law that was uh, written uh, by him uh, is wonderful news for those of us who want more local input and more diversity and more life in our local media. And I'll, I'll tell you uh, this, when the going gets tough, there's no one I would rather have on my side than Representative Doyle, and it's an honor, Mike, for me to uh, share the platform with you tonight, and thank you for having me up here. The best part of my job over the past 10 years has been the chance to attend public forums like this. I've been here uh, before at Carnegie Mellon. I'm delighted to be back here. Uh, and to hear directly from consumers and citizens uh, about the state of America's media your local communities media. I remember a number of years ago when the FCC chairman at that time wanted to make cha major changes to the media ownership rules that we had in order to help a few big media conglomerates gobble up more and more independent local outlets. And he and his team really seemed to think that people didn't care too much about that uh, issue. That was kind of an inside the beltway issue too technical for people to be uh, interested in or to understand, no interest to the public. And boy, was he wrong. My colleague at that time, Jonathan Adelstein at the commission and I insisted on having hearings around the country. And when the chairman wouldn't go along with our request, we held our own and we piggybacked on town hall meetings uh, uh, here and with other members of Congress and citizen groups around the country, helped a lot by free press and other citizen organizations. And in hearing after hearing, in city after city, from coast to coast, we heard from the public, left and right, Republican and Democrat, red state and blue state, not a partisan issue. Long into the night, people would testify to the major problems they had seen in their own communities. And here's the kicker, three million people, three million people wrote to Congress and the FCC both saying no to Chairman Michael Powell's proposed rules. Thumbs down. Well, Michael got him through the commission anyhow, forced him through on a three to two uh, vote. Congress went to work to overturn those rules. The Senate did, the House was on the verge of doing it, and then the good Third Circuit Court here in Pennsylvania sent them back to the commission as deficient. But in that time, I saw a movement born and a mission was created, and the word went out that citizen action can still make a difference. Even in these times, when so few people wield such outrageous levels of influence and power, concerned Americans can still make a difference. And that's why I am here tonight. Because while we kept the worst from happening back then with Chairman Powell's rules, we still have not created a media climate worthy of our country's needs and our country's citizens. And I'm convinced that it will not happen without real citizen action from you, everyone in this room, anyone you can influence, 
anyone you can talk to, write to, or somehow communicate with. If we're ever to have media of the people and by the people and for the people, you need to take this fight on. <clears throat> the stakes couldn't be higher. I truly believe that what is on the line is the continuation of our self-governing democracy. If we're denied quality news and information, if we're denied in-depth investigative reporting, if we're denied a media environment wherein independent voices can speak and be heard, then we will not be able to maintain an informed electorate. And an informed electorate, electorate is the premise of democracy. As a commissioner at the FCC for a decade, I've been pushing to ensure that each and every citizen of this nation has available the news and information they need in order to be contributing members, contributing participants in the affairs and decision making in the country. But without a serious national effort and without some significant policy changes, our media environment is only going to get worse. That means even more media outlets in fewer and fewer hands. It means media consolidation continues. Just this year, we've seen Comcast, NBCU, Citadel Cumulus, now Sinclair buying up a bunch of uh, stations, to name just a few examples. Masquerading as real news. It means more reporters walking the street in search of a job rather than walking the beat in search of a story. And it means a crippled and stunted small d democratic dialogue. Some would have you believe that somehow it's all going to turn out all right. New media, broadband, and the internet will replace traditional newspapers and broadcast news. And I'm the first to welcome the new opportunities, and they are legion created by broadband and the internet. And the lowered barriers to entry that uh, the internet is capable of providing. But you know, when you look at the top 20 news sites on the web, it is by and large the same song from the same big media players who have the heftiest percentage of the eye public's eyeballs. The overwhelming bulk of the news that we get, well over 90%, continues to originate from newspaper and broadcast journalism. The problem is there is so much less of it. According to a new study by Scholar Matthew Hinman, 98% of local news on the web, 98% of local news on the web originates from traditional news sources, news outlets, and local news online accounts for less than one half of 1% of all page views. Think about that. A lot of us use the internet for news, but you put it, put it in the context that actually exists out there, and you find one half of 1% of all page views go to local news. So online news has not plugged the gap left behind by the erosion of traditional journalism. And all the while, traditional journalism shrinks. Hundreds of newsrooms shuttered, tens of thousands of reporters laid off, bureaus at home and bureaus overseas closed down, hundreds of thousands of stories that could have been told and should have been told, going untold, uncovered, unheard. The mission of journalism one of the major missions of journalism is to hold the powerful accountable. And that mission is a shell of its former self. State capitals go uncovered with many more lobbyists than reporters. And in Washington, more than half the states, this is a hard thing to believe, but it's true, more than half the states do not have a single reporter accredited to Capitol Hill. How is that for holding the powerful? accountable. An FCC staff report this summer highlighted some of the ills that our media is suffering from. Reported that one-third of local broadcast TV stations do little to no news. It reported a, an often accepted practice nowadays of institutions paying stations for favorable coverage, including a hospital that paid a TV broadcaster $100,000 for a positive series of stories in the news. So that FCC report was uh, informative, but unfortunately it was very weak in its recommendations, far too weak to make 
a real dent in the ills that are bedeviling us. What was missing from the recommendations was any hint of the boldness that we really need if we are serious about righting the many media wrongs around us. One of the potentially useful recommendations to come from the report was a call for greater disclosure of what broadcasters are doing. And I'm all for disclosure, and in fact, we voted for an enhanced disclosure law at the FCC a few years back. What the report recommends is that the stations put their public files up on the internet so they would be accessible there instead of having to traipse down, find out where the broadcaster's main studio is and traipse down there and look at it and hope that the broadcaster can, can even find it. But that was kind of the end of the recommendation. And it's sort of like, uh, you know, a doctor diagnosing an illness but then not really prescribing medicine to deal with it. If you don't have policies that give the broadcaster some guidelines, that make some requirements, what difference does it make if you put the file up on, uh, on the internet? Who's going to go to the trouble to do anything to analyze that file if there's really not an avenue of redress when citizens complain to the Federal Communications Commission? Here's a better idea, I think. Instead of the current FCC rubber stamp license renewal process, wherein every eight years a broadcaster sends in a postcard to renew his or her license and we grant it without doing any serious review at all about the station's public service performance. How about a policy that demands licensees to renew every three years and we take a good hard look at the licensee's performance record and match them up with some guidelines to demonstrate that they are serving your community with real local news and information, that they are reflecting the diversity of the wondrous tapestry of uh, Americana that exists here in, in Pittsburgh that they are open to the expression of diverse viewpoints and that they're actually talking with people in their communities about the kind of programs folks want to hear and see. Is that asking too much? I don't believe so. And if we find that a station is not serving its community of license in a significant way, then I say let's take that license and give it to somebody who will. And if, if we had that kind of approach, I don't think it would take very long for the word to go forth that the FCC was back in business. I don't think it would involve a lot of regulating and, and, uh, and litigation and all that. I think, uh, I think the problem would clear itself up. I could go on. I get enthused about this subject, uh, but we want to hear from our, our panels, and most of all, we want to uh, hear from you. So I'll just close with a final plea. We need to be a news literate people. We need to be an informed electorate, and we need to be informed to sufficiently to deal with some really unprecedented problems that are facing this country right now. I was up in uh, Hyde Park, New York uh, uh, last week and got to uh, Franklin Roosevelt's home. We got to thinking that in, in some ways, some of the problems we have now are kind of reminiscent of uh, almost of the seriousness of what we had then with our economy. Are we able, really going to be able to turn this economy around, pull it back up, turn it around? Are we going to be able to compete with other nations in the world where the jobs seem to be going? Are we going to be able to educate our kids so that they can seize up, so they can have opportunity, number one, and seize opportunity and know how to seize it if it's out there? And we're not going to get that done without citizens armed with the facts and knowing, really knowing, what's going on out there in their communities, in their nation, and in the world around them. This is not a new challenge for the United States of America. It is as old as America. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison talk about it, talked about it, wrote about it, and legislated about it. They knew they were embarked on a risky experiment preserving this fragile young republic that they had fought so hard to build and to vindicate, and they'd won. And they knew how important the spread of information was to the success of this experiment. They knew how important informed voters were to the success of their experiment. And they wrote a First Amendment to ensure that the American people would be informed. And they built postal roads and subsidized the costs of distributing newspapers so 
so that citizens everywhere in the land would have the news and information they needed in order to make good decisions for the future of the country. They built the information infrastructure of early America. And now we are called upon to do that again, to provide ourselves with the tools that we need to sustain self-government and to safeguard and to prosper our country. We need to be information infrastructure builders just like the Founding Fathers were. And I don't see any greater challenge, I really do not, facing us today because so much rides on how we decide this issue. So the thought I want you to take home with you tonight is that this issue ought to be up at the top of your list of things to fight for because the resolution of all of those other challenges I talked about hinges on people knowing and people understanding, and that means a better media. And I intend to keep fighting for this as long as I can and until we make some progress, and I think it's gonna take all of us doing that, uh, and my purpose in coming here tonight is to express the hope that you will join in that battle. Many of you have already, I know that, and signed up and done wonderful work in the trenches uh, you need to get your friends, your neighbors, and communities mobilized in the same resource, in the same, uh, same battle, and then hopefully we can uh, vindicate this uh, promise of this country and have media of and by and for the people. Thank you very much.